Smooth. Bum de bum de bum bum de le 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 le. Bum de bum de bum de le 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 le. Bum de bum de bum bum de le 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 le. Bum de bum de bum de le 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 le. to another edition of the Stoke Review Video Review. I am Walt White, and uh, back once again for another weekly cigar review. Uh, this week I have uh, something a little different. Uh, it's, it's actually a house blend. It's the Don Ramon, if I can get it to focus in on the camera. This is a product of uh, Camacho Cigars, which is made for H.J. Bailey. Now, H.J. Bailey I th seems as though they're a, they're a major online retailer which does uh, wholesale stuff. Uh, a lot of uh, you know cigarettes, rolling papers, uh, premium cigars, a variety of different things. Now this particular cigar is, uh, as I mentioned, it's made by Camacho Cigars. Uh, this is the Maduro. There's also uh, a natural available. Uh, this happens to be a Robusto. It's a 5x50. And I don't have a, a whole lot of information about the, the, brand, the brand. I'm going by uh, one other review that I came across as well as uh, the H.J. Bailey website for just generic information. Now, it seems as though there are four, five, four, five, one, two, three, four uh, sizes of the Maduro. There's uh, a Churchill, which is a 48 by 7. There's a Robusto, 5 by 50. There's a 660, which is a 60 ring gauge with a 6 inch length. And there's a Toro, which is a 50 by 6. Now prices vary a little bit. Uh, boxes come uh, packaged 25 cigars per and they should run about $80 a piece for the Robusto. And uh, with that said, I actually should have cut my cigar while I was talking. But, <laughs> it makes it kind of tough. Seeing as I was preoccupied looking up the cigar information. Anyway, the computer's acting up a little bit. but. I'm going to go ahead and clip my cigar with my cigar scissors. Nothing unusual there. Uh, the, the appearance of the cigar is kind of dry. Now I know these are not dry, but they just they look very dried out. Uh, they're a little pliable, you know, which tells me that they're properly humidified. But just the way they look, I mean, the, the wrapper itself just looks very dry. And actually the way it's cutting it, it seems kind of dry too. Maybe it's just the... Uh, the wrapper that seems dry. Uh, Pre-light draw, there's a little bit of resistance to it. Color is nice and dark. Now up toward the head, the, the wrapper leaf is actually darker than it is everywhere else. Uh, the cap looked like it was put on on an angle. It was shifted far off to one side. Uh, it cut cleanly, no issues. As I said, the, the wrapper itself looks kind of dry. Uh, giving it a little squeeze the cigar itself feels pliable, so it's so I'm not uh, concerned with it being under humidified. It's not cracking, it's not popping. Uh, it feels nice and firm. There are a few medium-sized veins, none of which really stand out or, or add too much of a texture to the cigar. So all in all, it looks pretty good. The draw is good. Not getting much in terms of pre-light aroma. Uh, draw was good, so I'm going to go ahead and light my cigar. I'm actually going to light it with something a little different. And this is uh, actually uh, it's a, a Zippo Blue that I got from from H.J. Bailey that sent me these cigars. And uh, I really haven't used this thing a whole lot, so I figured I'd give it a shot and give it a shot if it works. <laughs> uh, at any rate, it was working. Well, anyway, this should be a blooper reel. I wasn't expecting that. I'm sure it'll work as soon as I can turn it up. 
Uh, but for the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and use a just a standard torch and uh, get the cigar going. And then I'll play around with the lighter a little bit and give you my opinion of it. Uh, because I do have an opinion of it. Cigar light's nice and easy. It uh, The foot it looks like there's some spacing between the tobacco, so it... Uh, you know, just looking at it, it appears as though it would draw just fine. Obviously, I checked it before I, I looked at it, but in any case. Alright, I got my cigar lit. And uh, so, there you have it. The introduction. Not, not a whole lot to tell you about the cigar. Uh, maybe that'll change when I go into the first third and we'll see if the cigar is exciting or if uh, I don't have a whole lot to say about it. So. Sit tight, I'll be back with the first third in just a second. Well, welcome back. I'm plugging along on my Don Ramon Maduro. It's uh, been about a half an hour now, and as you can see, whether or not it will focus is a different story, is that uh, the ash is nice and compact. The burn line is, is thin, it's even. I mean, it, there's a little bit of waviness to it, but uh, you know, you really can't ask for a whole lot better than that and, and, and be reasonable. I mean, it, it's not very common that you get a razor sharp burn. And I think this one looks pretty good. There's a little bit of wave to it. It's not a problem. It's very thin, crisp. The ash is holding uh, a nice tight shape. Uh, it lasts for about an inch and then uh, takes a, a firm tap to knock it off the cigar. So uh, as far as the burn goes, uh, no problems at all. I'm very happy with the cigar. Uh, it produces a good amount of smoke. It's nice and dense. Uh, easy to get through the sinuses. The burn rate seems a little fast. Now, it's got a big band, so that it, that makes it appear as though I'm burning through the cigar much faster than I, I really am, because the band takes up so much real estate on the cigar. But I'm probably actually in the second third now, and it's only been about a half an hour, and usually I'm not quite through the first third at that point in time. So the burn rate is elevated. Um, the The body is about medium. Uh, finish is neutral. Uh, it's not dry, it's not creamy, uh, just middle of the road. And as far as the flavor goes, you know, it's really flat. Uh, I'm not getting anything of high interest. Uh, there's a little bit of a Maduro flavor from the wrapper. There's a little bit of uh, just a natural tobacco taste, but it's not what I would consider a full flavored cigar. Um, I'm not quite sure I would consider it medium flavored, you know, medium flavor level. Uh, it's it's fairly mild in the flavor department. Seems a little flat. Uh, you know, we'll give it a little bit of time, see if it comes around in the second third and the final third, see if anything develops. But at this point in time, it's medium bodied, medium flavor. Uh, you know, nothing to write home about. It's a solid cigar. It's performing well, but uh, you know, nothing is really wowing me at this point. Uh, so we're just going to leave it at that. Uh, back to my lighter, which did not work earlier. Actually, it did. It was just a uh, user error, which is the case a lot of times with things that I'm tr trying to make work. Uh, this thing, the whole top section plunges, and apparently I wasn't plunging the whole thing down completely. And uh, if you spark it enough, it, it lights, and the cigar actually needs a touch-up, so go ahead and do that. Of course, this <laughs> lighter is going to make a fool out of me. Uh, I'm not, I'm not crazy about the the lighter itself. Uh, it, it looks good. I like the sticker and the the engraving on the back, the H.J. Bailey logo and stuff. Uh, it's very coarse on your thumb, and I realize flint wheels tend to be because the, you know they're they're creating a spark across uh, you know the flint or the, this this wheel is coarse. But you know it's kind of uncomfortable, and you know you're you're sparking the lighter, and you're and you've got to push everything down, and uh, you know for the life of me, I don't see a fuel adjustment knob on this. There's a fill valve, which 
Doesn't look like it has any uh, turning apparatus in it. And there's uh, what looks like a little rivet. And you know, aside from that, I don't see anything to fill it. Now I've only used this thing half a dozen times since I got it. I mean, it could be the fact that it's low in butane, but we really expect it to last much longer than that. So, give it another go, see what happens. Yeah, I'm not, this, cigar, this lighter is not very comfortable. It sort of irritates my thumb. Granted, I guess after you generate calluses, you won't have to worry about it anymore, but uh, it's working. Uh, all, I, I really prefer something like this. Just kind of hit the button and let it go. Uh, or, uh, or something like this, which is actually a Zippo with an insert in it. Uh, I'm not digging the, the whole flywheel, <laughs> or is there a flint wheel thing? It's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's a Zippo, but I would much rather put an insert in my Zippo and get that ping. But there you have it. First, third, and my thoughts on the Zippo Blue. So uh, sit tight. I'll be right back. We'll look at the second third of the Don Ramon Maduro uh, by Camacho Cigars for H.J. Bailey. Well, welcome back. It's been about 20 minutes since the last time I was uh, on camera, and uh, everything's going uh, just as I would hope. Uh, burn is is on par with uh, where it should be. Burn rate still seems a little elevated, but it's smoking well, uh, draws well, produces a, a good volume of smoke. Uh, I wanted to come back so soon because I, I really feel like this cigar is moving, and uh, I've got to try to catch up. Uh, removing the band for the second third and I'm practically through it so I want to do this kind of briefly. Uh, the body is still medium, uh, finish is still neutral, I'm not really getting a defined dryness or creaminess, it just sort of lingers right down the middle. Um, and the flavors are still flat, uh, there really hasn't been a whole lot of development. Uh, I'm getting a little bit of uh, a harsh aftertaste. Uh, it's not metallic, uh, it's not nicotine, it's just sort of harsh. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to uh, describe it. The primary flavor just seems to be just a natural tobacco flavor. Uh, there's a little bit of a Maduro kiss to it, just because of the wrapper, but there really isn't one dominant flavor that's grabbing my attention. Everything is just, it seems, middle of the road. You know, it's not exciting, there isn't a high level of flavor out of the cigar. This is certainly something that that I could see myself smoking again, even at this stage in the cigar, but I think it would be more along the lines of something I would pick up if I was preoccupied. You know, this isn't something I'd sit down and I'd smoke when I, I really wanted to enjoy the cigar for what it was, just because it doesn't have a level of flavor that I appreciate out of a cigar. Now granted, it's kind of early to be, to be wrapping up the cigar, but uh, I don't know what else to tell you, and I don't want to do a, you know, a 45 second clip you know, for the for the entire second third. So, uh, I guess two and a half minutes is, is good enough. So, that's what I've got so far. Medium flavor, medium body, neutral finish. Uh, burning characteristics are good, with the exception it's burning a little fast. Other than that, the ash looks good, the burn line's good, the smoke volume is good. Uh, it's just a little under flavored for my preference. So, that's the second third. I'll be back one last time to do the final third, wrap up the cigar, and I'll let you be on your way. back and it's about time to wrap up my Don Ramos uh, Maduro. It's been almost an hour and a half now. Uh, I'm finally hitting that last stretch of cigar. Uh, the burn's pretty good. Uh, it's a little uh, it's a little uneven at this point but uh, it's something I think will correct itself. I just ashed a cigar uh, 
just a few minutes ago. And uh, just like before, I think as soon as the ash begins to develop, everything will straighten out and it will be burning properly. Uh, the draw is, is fairly loose. I mean, there's it's just a little bit of resistance to it, very free. Uh, as a result, the cigar is beginning to get a little warm. And, you know, that brings a little bit of harshness along with it. You just need to space out your puffs a little bit. Uh, the body is picked up a little bit. It's a little bit closer to, to uh, medium to full, but it's still more or less medium. The finish is transitioning more towards creamy now, and the flavor is just finally starting to come alive. It's a little unfortunate that it comes this late in the game, because uh, I don't have a whole lot of cigar left to really enjoy, and it was a whole lot of flat flavor up until now. Uh, at this point, I'm getting those rich Maduro flavors, you know, the ones that you expect out of a Maduro cigar. I'm getting like uh, heavy roasted dark, you know, black coffee. Uh, I'm getting some bitter chocolate as well. As soon as those flavors begin to subside, I'm getting that, that comfortable natural tobacco flavor that I was getting earlier on as more of an aftertaste at this point. So you get these rich flavors and then it transitions to a neutral flavor and then sort of fades out. Uh, the, the flavor at this point is, is what I would consider to be full flavored. Uh, up until now, it was fairly flat. I mean, I mean, it just wasn't a very flavorful cigar. You know, I, the impression I was getting out of this was that it was a Camacho, it was, it was almost like a second-rate Camacho product. You were getting, you know, the, the body, the texture of the, of the Camacho smoke, you're getting the, you know, the construction of Camacho smoke, but it lacked that flavor that, that comes with the Camacho name. And finally, now it's beginning to pick up. I think if it, I would enjoy the cigar a whole lot more if I could get that flavor most of the way through, or maybe if it transitioned sort of late in the first third, I could, I could be very happy with the cigar. But, you know, I just think, I, I just think it's very mediocre, uh, all in all, even with the transition and, and the good flavors now. I just think it's too little too late, and it's, it's a mediocre cigar. It's not bad, it's not anything to write home about, it's not exciting, doesn't make me want to run out and buy a box. It's, it's a solid cigar, burns well, performs well. Maybe someone that doesn't like those very full flavors will find this much more enjoyable than I have, but uh, my, my flavor preference or my taste preference is geared more towards cigars that are medium to medium to full with lots of flavor. I like a full flavored cigar, and this one was kind of lackluster. Now, coincidentally, just the other week when I did the, the, uh, actually, now I remember what I was going to say before I started to go off on that tangent. Uh, the flavors are sort of reminiscent of a stout. You know, I'm getting a, a really dark roasted coffee as well as bitter chocolate. And coincidentally, I just happened to watch a review on uh, MikeNWV.com, which is uh, Mike in West Virginia. He did a, a beer review. He's been doing these uh, video beer reviews, and he reviewed a beer uh, yesterday, two days ago, something like that. That uh, that I happen to think is awesome. I, you know, I love this beer. It's one of my favorite beers, and it's uh, Samuel Smith's Oatmeal Stout. It's got uh, very rich flavors. It's it seems a little watered down, but it, it's a good solid uh, stout nonetheless. And uh, I think this cigar would shine much better with with something like that. Uh, maybe not something as full flavored or as, as hoppy as uh, as uh, the Victory Brewing Company's uh, uh, what is that Storm King. I, I think that is just too much, a little too over the top for this cigar. But something like uh, the Oatmeal Stout, which is kind of pricey, but uh, I think the, the Samuel Smith Oatmeal Stout would go very well with this cigar. Uh, possibly uh, a Yingling Black and Tan. That's a little less flavorful, uh, kind of a little watered down. It may not bring out those uh, those Maduro flavors out of the cigar as much as the, the oatmeal stout would. Uh, maybe even a Guinness, something like that, would bring out the flavors more. So I, I think if you if you put some thought into what you were going to pair this cigar with, you could amplify the flavors and make it much more flavorful than it is. Uh, I Actually, H.J. Bailey sent me a, a whole box of these cigars, and as I smoke through them, I'm, I'm intentionally going to smoke them when I plan on drinking a porter or a stout, something with those, sim with those similar dark flavors. 
uh, because I really think it'll help draw out the nuances of the cigar and, and maybe it'll be, it will become more flavorful earlier on simply because I'm pairing it up properly. Uh, in this case I was just drinking water so there wasn't a whole lot of uh, flavor being drawn out from the water. You, you know you're getting you're getting whatever the cigar has got to give you. You're not sort of uh, you know contrast and complementary flavors and whatnot. But anyway back to what I was what I almost went on a tangent about. The other week I did a review on the Oliva Connecticut. Now I met up with uh, the, the sales rep for Oliva and I was talking to him a little bit and uh, he had asked me if I got anything exciting in and I was going over some of the cigars that I've got and what I planned on review, planned on reviewing and I had mentioned to him that, uh, that I was doing this H.J. Bailey cigar which was uh, Don Ramon Maduro and uh, he, uh, he was telling me that apparently Oliva did a, did a product for H.J. Bailey. I don't know whether they still make one of their lines or they used to make one of their lines or, or whatever the case may be. I thought that was kind of interesting that Oliva had a hand in, in at least one of their lines at some point in time. and. Uh, he also went in to tell me that, uh, you know, he, he, he has the same opinion of some of the Camacho uh, created uh, sort of sub-products that I do, is that they're not quite up to par with, you know, Camacho product. Uh, it, it's like uh, Camacho reserves all the best stuff for their cigars, and you would kind of expect that. But uh, just because the Camacho name is associated with it doesn't mean that it's, you're going to get that same full-flavored, full-bodied, just uh, Camacho product that you would out of, say, the, the Camacho Corojo Maduro or the SLR Maduro, things of that nature. And uh, I thought it was kind of interesting that he said that because I was thinking the same thing. I had this, had a cigar just a few days ago, and or just a few days prior to talking to him, and actually the review that you probably saw yesterday, which was the Jericho Cam by Camacho, was sort of lackluster too. Uh, but, you know, three days ago I actually was in the mood to do one of these videos, I lit up uh, Camacho Corojo Maduro and I was going to do that for a short Ashes review. And uh, I just wasn't feeling it. I just wasn't up to the review. I got th through the introduction and I just gave up on it. I turned the camera off and, and just enjoyed the cigar with whatever I was doing. And uh, that cigar was just leaps and bounds better than the, uh, the Jericho by Camacho and the, this, uh, this Don Ramon Maduro. But, you know, I, I'm not trying to knock the cigar too much. It is a solid cigar. I, roughly, I think it's about three dollars and twenty cents a piece, three fifty, something like that. If uh, if the numbers I saw were in fact correct, at about eighty dollars a box, over twenty five cigars, you get between three twenty and three fifty, you know, respectively after shipping and whatnot. So, you know, for the price point, I think it's a solid cigar, but but still, I don't think it was very exciting. And uh, you know, I think it was a little, uh, it was. Uh, too little, too late kind of a thing, where if it was more flavorful throughout, I think I would have enjoyed it much more. But uh, looking down at the timer, it looks like I've killed enough time to, uh, to feel like this review is up to par as far as time goes. So uh, that's what I've got for the H.J. Bailey slash Don Ramon slash Camacho Maduro. So uh, until next week, happy smoking.